Today I'm going to talk about bubbles, or more specifically, what kind of systems you can create when you make bubbles between two identical rings like these. So the first system is one that we discussed in class, which is when you take the two rings, pop the membrane in the middle, and spread them apart to make a catenary curve, like that. That system, while interesting, is relatively simple compared to the other system that could be made. If you take the bubbles, don't pop the thing in the middle, and create the membrane in between the two, like so. This system is drastically different from the other. First of all, the curve is a completely different shape. And second of all, we have a sort of a dip in the middle where the uh, two halves meet at an angle as opposed to through a smooth curve. So what we want to figure out is why the bubbles act this way. When two bubbles intersect, we get this sort of cross-section between the two. where We have these original curves, which will essentially disappear as they connect and create a new curve in the middle, as you can see in both of these diagrams. Now, the geometry of this situation is rather interesting. We want to consider the system with two equally sized bubbles. As I said, when two bubbles intersect, they form a new line down the middle that replaces the parts of the curves that would overlap. In the case of two equally sized bubbles, that line will be vertical. This line is vertical is due to the geometry of the situation and the fact that the bubbles like to meet at certain angles. The radius of the circle, which that new line is a side of, is described by RC with the relationship 1 over RB, the radius of one bubble, equals 1 over RC, the radius of the new circle, plus 1 over RA, the radius of the other bubble. When RB and RA are equal, the math of the situation states that RC must be infinite. What this means is that any edge of that bubble is effectively a straight line. Specifically in the situation with two equal sized bubbles, the line segment OZ will bisect the angle AOB. This means that since AOX is a 90 degree angle, AOZ must be 30 degrees. This gives us a 30-60-90 triangle with AO and the midpoint between A and B as the sides. Now, that may not seem that significant. What that means is that we can find the height of this membrane based on the radius of this circle. The system is a different shape in that the soap has to reach the ring on either end from the middle. However, where the two bubbles meet, it's essentially a model of the system just discussed with the two identical bubbles. Given that the radius of the uh, hyperimposed circle, RA, uh, can lead us to finding the overall shape of the system, it'd be great to know how we can find that. The two likely candidates for uh, the variables that affect RA are R1, the radius of the rings, and L, the distance between the two rings. Therefore, to figure out the relationship between RA and those, we wanted to look at the units. We should be able to say that RA is proportionate to R1 to some variable alpha times L to some variable beta. Since all three have units of meters, we get that one should equal alpha plus beta. Unfortunately, this is the best we can say right now as far as the relationship between alpha and beta. However, what we can say is that RA over R1 to the alpha times L to the beta should equal a constant of some sort describes the system as a whole. Now logically, RA should grow with R1 and shrink as L grows, which means that we want alpha to be positive and 1 minus alpha equal to beta to be negative. Unfortunately, that leaves the exponent with some freedom. We do know, however, that RA over R1 alpha times L beta should be constant if alpha and beta are correct. Now, I tried a few likely options. R1 to the second over L, R1 to the third over L squared, 
and R1 to the 3 halves over L to the 1 half. Of these three options, R1 to the 3 halves over L to the 1 half gave the values that seemed most consistent with creating a constant value relative to RA. Now, clearly, this is not the best way to take measurements and that if we had some sort of way to create consistent measurements so that R1 didn't change between measurements of L, it would be possible, hopefully, to actually find the relationship between the two and RA. So here's the model of our system. What we have is the two rings, both of radius R1, with the membrane of radius R2 in the middle. R2 is itself square root of 3 over 2 times RA, the radius of the circle that we can impose over the middle here, which is to say it's a function of R1 and L. Essentially, R2 is another constant if we can find the relationship between R1, L, and RA. This should allow us, though, to begin setting up an equation to find the surface area of the system. Since bubbles minimize surface area, ideally we could then use this equation to find the shape of this curve. So we want to say what the surface area is equal to, which is, simply put, the integral of all of the small segments of surface area, which are, in turn, described by 2 pi y times ds this little tiny change here, plus pi r2 squared to give us the area created by that membrane in the middle. Now, we can continue to change this since 2 pi y ds is equal to 2 pi y times the square root of dx, the little change in x, plus dy, each squared square root. Naturally, we want to keep pi r2 squared. What we want to do next is factor out a dy, such that we have the integral 2 pi y times the square root of x prime squared plus 1 dy plus pi r2 squared. Now, since this is a symmetrical system, when we want to add bounds to this, what we want to do is instead of integrating over the entire thing to get the surface area, we just want to integrate from one side to the middle, multiply it by 2. So, our final equation for the surface area becomes 2 times the integral from r2 to r1 of 2 pi y times the square root of x prime squared plus 1 times dy plus pi r2 squared. Now, while that does seem to describe the surface area quite well, it isn't quite enough. Remember when I mentioned that the bubbles intersect to form 120 degree angles? That still needs to happen. Unfortunately, the surface area equation doesn't account for this constraint. Even more unfortunately, I don't know how to make it account for it, and even if I did, I don't know how to solve the calculus variation problem that results. However, before I go, there are a couple other interesting points to make about this system. First of all, the catenary system seems to be far more stable than that of the curve, able to stretch fairly far before it breaks. Meanwhile, the curve only seems to make it Part way, not nearly as far apart. This may be related to the other phenomena I observed, which is that the center of the imposed circle is outside the ring for all three of the systems that I managed to photograph. As the rings move farther apart, the circle gets smaller, which means that the center moves closer to the ring. None of these systems I saw had the circle, center of the circle reach the ring. So I don't know if that is the limit, if that is when the system breaks, and if it's not, I don't know what happens at that point, if there is anything special about it. So it's definitely worth further investigation. I hope in the future to create a system that allows me to expand upon this, 
and to capture better images and better measurements of this system so that potentially I can actually discover what the relationships between the different variables in the system are and how it allows us to potentially actually solve the calculus of variations problem that would give us the shape of the system as a whole. Thanks for watching.